Big Bang was seriously weird. We don't know what came before it because nothing came before it. There was no time before the Big Bang. And just like space in the beginning, it was compressed by a factor of billions. Which is why so much space and matter was created in such a little time because time itself was compressed. The universe has been through about a dozen different eras in its creation to get up to where we are right now. And where we are right now is pretty much defined by the creation of planets and solar systems. And five of those eras, called epochs, happened in the first second after the Big Bang. And what happened in those incredibly short epochs set the stage for the universe that we live in today. You'll often hear scientists, especially physicists, talk about initial conditions. Especially in chaotic systems, even the slightest alteration in initial conditions can cause a chain reaction that can end up with a completely different result at the end. The standard model of particle physics is so far the best explanation of the fundamental units of matter and energy in our universe, and it looks like this. The universe is governed by four primary forces, gravitational force, the electromagnetic force, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. And there are 17 fundamental particles, six quarks, up, down, top, bottom, charm, and strange, six leptons, the electron, muon, tau, and their corresponding neutrinos, and five bosons, the W and Z boson, the photon, the gluon, and the most recently discovered Higgs boson. The Higgs boson, by the way, is the only fundamental particle named after a person. Good show, old chap. Each one of these 17 fundamental particles has a particular mass, a particular charge, and a particular spin. And if any of these values had been even a little bit different, the universe as we know it today would not have been created. And all of that happened in the first second of time. Here's how it all went down. Our scientific understanding begins at 10 to the negative 43 seconds. That looks like this. This is where our first epoch begins, called the Grand Unification Epoch. It's called this because all the matter and fundamental forces in the universe were compressed into a single unified thing. This epoch ended when the force of gravity separated itself from the rest at around 10 to the negative 36 seconds. The inflationary epoch began when the universe goes through an exponential expansion, triggered by the separation of the strong nuclear force. Early particles and antiparticles began to form into a quark gluon plasma that's often called quark soup. It's evenly distributed across the universe, which at this point is about the size of a grapefruit. At about 10 to the negative 32 seconds, we enter the electroweak epoch, characterized by the creation of large numbers of exotic particles, including the W and Z bosons, as well as the Higgs. The Higgs field is essential to this part of the Big Bang because it slows the particles down enough to actually create atoms, basically allowing matter to be created out of pure radiation. This lasts until 10 to the negative 12 seconds when the universe cools to a comfy 10 quadrillion degrees, starting the quark epoch. Cozy enough to allow quarks and electrons and neutrinos to form in large numbers, and it allows the rest of the fundamental forces of the universe to untangle themselves. But something happens during this epoch when these particles form that basically means the difference between the universe as we know it and bizarro universe. Because the process of creating matter out of radiation also creates antimatter. And when these particles and antiparticles collide, they cancel each other out in pretty spectacular fashion. So in the quark epoch, this radiation is spewing out particles and antiparticles all over the place, and as soon as they're created, they collide with each other and explode with the force of an atomic bomb. Combine that with a balmy temperature, and the quark epoch is not a place you would want to vacation. I mean, anything over a trillion degrees, and I'm out. I'm pretty fair-skinned. But through nothing more than just a fluke of math, for every billion antiparticles, there was a billion and one regular particles. So after the most incredible fireworks show in the history of the universe, regular matter won out. But think about that. All the matter and energy in the universe today is one billionth of what was created in the Big Bang. Damn. And all of that destruction happened between 10 to the negative 12 and 10 to the negative 6 seconds. We finally close out our first second of existence with the Hadron Epoch, where the universe cools to a vacation-worthy trillion degrees, allowing quarks to combine to form protons and neutrons. Neutrons, by the way, were created by the combination of an electron and a positron, and when they collided, they released a packet of energy in the form of a neutrino, and those neutrinos are still flying around the universe today. And these particles are the building blocks of atoms, which formed in the first 20 minutes of the universe, elements like hydrogen and helium and a little bit of lithium. But they existed in sort of a cosmic soup for about 250,000 years before things cooled off enough for them to actually be able to move freely. But even then, it would be another 300 million years before forces like gravity and dark matter would compress this hydrogen enough to fuse and cause stars to form. So it's often called the dark ages of the universe because there was literally nothing out there to create light. 
So imagine the most insane second that could possibly exist, followed by 300 million years of absolutely nothing. That's what watching the Big Bang would be like. As most of you know, once these stars started forming, they fused these lighter elements into heavier elements like carbon and oxygen and iron, the building blocks of life today. The first generation of stars and galaxies were supermassive stars, and when they go, they go supernova, which creates even heavier elements all the way down to like gold and uranium. And it was only with those heavier elements that planets could form and put us where we are today. Be sure to check out my other video on the Big Bang where I discuss some of the problems with the theory and some alternative theories that may start to take its place. Thanks as always for watching. Pass this on if you thought it was mind blowing and hit subscribe if you want to see more. I come back with stuff just like this every Monday. Until then, I wish you an eye-opening week and I will see you next time. Love you guys. Take care.